All right, so welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's intermediate full body circuit workout. Before we get started, I wanted to give you a quick reminder that you are responsible for your own personal health and safety throughout this workout. Be mindful of how your body is feeling today, modify the movements and take breaks when you need. Uh, we are excited to share our mission through our intermediate full body circuit workout today. Uh, by providing life-changing opportunities through sports and physical activity to individuals who are blind and visually impaired. So uh, my name is Megan, and I will be leading you through the workout today. Uh, so we will begin with a dynamic warm-up, some dynamic warm-up stretches, and then we'll do three circuits, a standing core circuit, a standing leg circuit, an arm circuit, and then we have a couple of extra uh, full body circuit challenges followed uh, concluding our workout today will be our cool down so to begin let's start by waking up our body and doing some neck rolls so to do that i'm just standing in a comfortable position with my feet a little wider than shoulders width apart and i'm going to take my my chin and bring it down to my chest and then roll my right ear over by my right shoulder and then turn my gaze up towards the sky by bringing my head back. And then my left ear to my left shoulder and then around again. Chin to chest, right ear to right shoulder, moving my neck around behind, uh, like turning my gaze up, then left ear to left shoulder and around. So do a few more just to loosen up your neck and get ready for your workout today with our warm ups. Starting up high in our body, and we'll just kind of work down to wake to wake up our body. So, after your neck feels uh, good and a little uh, mobility there, we'll move down to doing some side bends. So, I'm going to put my hands on my hips and taking my left hand off my hip, I'm going to arch my hand out and around, bringing my fingertips above my head, and then pointing my fingertips towards my left fingertips towards the right wall getting a nice stretch in my left side. And then making this dynamic, I'm gonna bring my left hand back to my left hip and then bring my right hand off my right hip, arching it up and around on top of my head uh, with my arms straight. And then my fingertips are pointing now towards the left wall. I'm getting a nice stretch in my right side. We're going to be doing lots of core twisting today. So wait. Uh, warming up our sides. So let's make this dynamic and bringing our right hand back down to our right hip and then left hand up and over. Nice stretch on our left side and then to our right side. If you would like to time these to your breath, you can inhale your hand up, exhaling it back down to your hip, inhaling your other hand up and over, getting a nice side stretch and then exhaling your hand back to your hip. Let's do just a couple more of those with your own breathing cadence, rhythm. All right, I'm just gonna shake my arms out, loosen up my arms a little bit. Now we're gonna do some arm extensions or scissor arms, however you wanna call them. I'm going to bring my arms out so that they're in a T-shape. So my arms are extended on each side of my body with my wrists, even with my shoulders. And now I'm going to bring my hands, uh, my arms are gonna stay straight and my hands are gonna go in front of my body and cross with my left hand on top, right hand on the bottom, and then go back out to that T-shape and then bring the, your hands in again uh, in front of your body, right hand on top of left hand. So we'll do some scissor arms or arm extensions to wake up our shoulders, do these at your own pace. Just kind of waking up our arms, getting ready for a good workout. Doing some scissor arms, arm extensions. A few more here. And go ahead and shake your arms out. Shake them down to your hands down towards the earth. And next we're going to move into some windmill toe touches. So a little bit wider stance, a little bit wider than shoulders width apart. And I'm going to extend my arms out in that T-shape again, bringing my left fingertips down to meet my right toes, hinging at the waist, and then hinging back up, standing up nice and tall, bringing my right fingertips down to my left toes, and then back up again. 
So let's do a few of those at your own pace. Again, getting some twisting motion in our core. Going to have some twisting in our workout today. So do a few windmill toe touches. Do as many as feel adequate for your warm up needs today. I'm going to do a couple more on each side. And then we'll get into some high knees marching. So for these, I'm going to shift my weight over my right foot, lifting my left foot up off the mat, bringing my knee out in front of me, and then back down to the mat, and then shifting my weight to my left foot, bringing my right foot off the mat, bringing my knee up as high as comfortable for me, uh, and then back down to the mat. And then we'll just do that at a cadence that works for you. So as I'm doing my high knees with my lower body, I'm going to swing my hands in opposition. What that means is as my right knee is coming up forward, my left hand is swinging forward. So, and then when my left knee is coming up, my right hand is swinging forward. Your elbow should be bent at about a 90 degree bend. And if you can envision taking a lollipop from your pocket up to your mouth with that hand that's swinging forward in opposition with your knee that's up, that works. All right, so feel free to choose your pace. You can walk around the imaginary track. You can power walk. You can jog. We want to get our heart rate up a little bit, as this is a cardio workout today, too. So we're waking up our legs, getting ready for a good workout. And I'm going to pace down a little bit. And grab my glass of water before we get into our first circuit. So hopefully your body should be woken up, your heart rate's pumping a little bit. We're ready to go. For today's workout, it's good to have some water nearby. Uh, we'll take uh, water breaks in between the circuits. And also, um, if you have a chair, uh, that will come in handy today too for one of our exercises. All right, the first circuit that we'll do today is a standing at core circuit. There will be three exercises we'll do. We'll do each for 30 seconds when we get into the circuit uh, with a 10 second period of transition or break. And then we'll move into the next exercise. Um, we will do four sets. So three exercises, four sets. That's what, 12 exercises in total um, throughout the whole circuit. So our three exercises will be standing bicycle crunches followed by single leg sprints, and then core stabilizers. So to begin, standing uh, bicycle crunch, I'm gonna stand in a comfortable stance. My feet are about shoulders width apart. I'm going to take my hands and rest them behind my head. Now, as you do this, make sure you're not pulling on your head or your neck. They're just resting back there. Um, so your elbows are pointed out to each side. Your left elbow to the left wall, right elbow towards the, left, the right wall. So as we did high knees when we were warming up today, our feet will do a similar motion. So I'm gonna shift my weight to my left foot, raising my right foot off the mat and my knee out in front of me. And as I raise that right knee, I'm going to go slightly across my body with my knee. And then I'm going to bring my left elbow in the direction of my right knee. Now I'm not flexible and I don't expect anybody to be touching their uh, elbow to their knee, uh, but in that general direction, okay? And then we'll return our right foot to the mat, lifting up our left foot from the mat, bringing that left knee forward in front of you, and then your right elbow down in the direction of your left knee. So in motion, we will be lifting one knee up in front of us, kind of across our body, and then bringing our opposite elbow towards that knee, okay? That's the front view and then the side. Okay. So that is our standing bicycle crunch. Uh, when we are standing, make sure we're standing in good posture. This is, these are core exercises. So as we're lifting our leg up, engage your core by sucking your belly button back towards your spine to support your structure, okay? So we wanna engage the core, get a little twist in our torso, working those obliques. 
and raising one foot at a time off the ground. The next one is single leg sprints. So for these, I'm gonna step down to the short end of my mat. So I'm facing my mat longwise, my workout space. And then I'm going to take a step forward with my left foot. So I'm going to now lower my body into a forward lunge. My left knee is stacked over my left ankle in front of me. And then behind me, my toes are engaged and my um, shin is about parallel to the ground. All right, this is the lower body beginning position of our single leg sprints. I'm gonna now raise my fingers up towards the sky. So my arms are upright, kind of like in a warrior position. Uh, next, I'm going to bring my back leg and bring my knee up in front of me. So I'm taking my right foot off the ground, bringing my knee up in front of me. As my knee comes up in front of me, I'm going to bring my hands down so that they're relaxing along my sides. Then I'm going to bring my right leg back into that low lunge and repeat. So going from a low lunge to bringing your knee up in front of you as you, your arms go from up to the sky to down along your sides. Okay, that is a single leg sprint. So we'll do it on one side for 30 seconds. And then for the next time we go through it, we'll do it on our opposite side with our right foot forward, left foot back, same thing. Our right knee is stacked over our right ankle. Uh, toes are engaged on the mat. Your uh, left shin somewhat parallel to the mat or the ground below you arms up in the sky. As we bring our knee up in front of us, our left knee up in front of us, our arms go down to the sides and then back into that lunge position. That is a single leg sprint. The next one are core stabilizers. If you wish, you can hold weights in your hands or water bottles with our core stabilizers. I'm just gonna have a comfortable stance for my lower body. Now I'm going to extend my arms out in front of me. So my wrists are even with my shoulders and I'm going to twist my core. So from having my wrists out at 12 o'clock in front of me, I'm going to twist to my right. So my hands are now pointed at three o'clock and then back to 12 o'clock in front of me and then the other direction to about nine o'clock on the clock and then back in front of me. So this is a twisting motion with your core. You'll feel this in your obliques, which are the side muscles of your core. And you should be also engaging your core, your, your central core muscles by sucking that belly button back and then we'll be twisting, okay? Those are core stabilizers. So because we're doing the single leg sprints, uh, with one on each side per the 30 second exercise. We're gonna do four sets in this circuit and um, I'll guide you through the process uh, for what exercise is coming next. All right, so we are ready to go with our standing core circuit. We'll start with standing bicycle crunches for 30 seconds, starting in three, two, one, go. So I'm putting my hands resting behind my neck. Hold on, sorry about that. Okay, my hands are resting behind my head and then I'm going to bring one knee up in front of me, cross my body. As I'm doing that, I'm crunching my core, bringing the opposite elbow to across my body as well, towards the direction of my knee. And we're resting. We'll rest for 10 seconds here and then move into our single leg sprints. In three, two, one, go. I'm lunging forward with my right foot and hands are up towards the sky. I'm going to kick my left knee up in front of me. As I do, my arms are coming down along my side and then return my foot to that low, my left foot behind me to that low lunge position. And we'll repeat at a pace that works for you. Remember to breathe and remember to engage your core and rest. 
Next, we'll move into our core stabilizers. Feel free to grab some weights if you choose. And go. Hands out in front of you. Uh, hands pointed towards 12 o'clock. Your wrists even to your shoulders. I'm twisting to my right. So my hands are at 3 o'clock. Back to 12 o'clock. Then over to 9 o'clock. Holding weight at one plane or the weight of your arms. And we're twisting our torso, working our obliques. And rest. rest. All right, shake out those arms. Take a nice deep breath to relax your core. Moving back to our standing bicycle crunches next. And go. Hands are resting gently behind your head. And you're bringing one knee at a time up, crossing it over. Uh, in front of your body, kind of cross body, and then bringing, as my left knee is up, my right elbow is going in the direction of my knee. When my right knee is up, my left elbow is going in that direction. Remember, breathe and rest. All right, shake it out. We'll get into our single leg sprint with our left leg forward this time. And go. So left leg forward in a lunging position with your hands up towards the sky, bringing that right knee from behind you to in front of you. As you do, you're bringing your arms down to your sides. Engage that core. Suck your belly button back to your spine. And rest. Moving into our core stabilizers next. Choose your weights of choice, whether they're cans of soup, water bottles, and go. Bottles of uh, cleansing agents, as I'm using, <laughs> spray bottles to, to clean with. So our hands are even with our shoulders, arms are stretched out, and we're turning from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, back to 12 and then over to nine, twisting our torso, slow and deliberate. Rest. And rest. Back to our standing bicycle crunches next. And here we go. All right, we're lifting up one knee at a time, cross our body bringing uh, the opposite elbow in the direction of the knee that's up and forward, crunching our abs. Breathe as we're working our, co our core. Sometimes we forget to breathe and hold our breath. Oxygen to the muscles is important. And rest, rest. moving back into our single leg sprints, I believe. The right leg is forward this time. And we'll go into our lunge and going. Hands up toward the sky, left knee forward, and hands down to your side. Back into that lunge position. Nice job, everyone. Keep working hard. Getting closer. Rest. Resting. Moving to our core stabilizers next. And go. Arms out in front of you. 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Twisting our upper body. Engaging our core. Waking up those core muscles to support our body. Whew. Remember to breathe. You're doing great. Keep going. And rest. Moving back into our standing bicycle crunches. In three, two, one, go. Standing bicycle crunches. If this is a challenge to your balance, you could always extend your arms out in a T 
and still uh, do the same movement with your legs and crunching your core as you're bringing one knee up forward. And rest. rest. Moving into single leg sprints. Uh, I think it's left, left leg forward. The last of us are here. All right, we're in the lunge position, hands up to the sky, and then moving that right foot, uh, bringing your right knee up in front of you as you do your arms go down to the sides. Crunching those abs, engaging your core. You got this. Not only are these core exercises, also work in your legs. Resting. And last but not least, last of the core stabilizers. In three, two, one, go. Arms out forward, wrists even with shoulders. Twisting that torso. Breathing, you can time these with your breathing cycle if you wish. Exhale your hands to the side. Inhale them back to center. So forth. Three, two, one, complete. Awesome job. We have completed one standing core circuit. I'm gonna reset my timer here and I'm gonna grab a drink of water and then I'll go into explaining our next circuit, which is going to be a standing leg circuit. Drink of water real quick. All right, definitely getting my heart rate up, breaking a sweat. All right, for this one, uh, one the last exercise we'll discuss, uh, having a chair is helpful. All right, so we have three leg exercises. They're going to be kickbacks, followed by speed skaters, and lastly, chair squat jumps. Okay, so with kickbacks, stand in a nice comfortable stance with your feet about shoulders width apart or even a little narrower. Uh, if you would like to hold on to a table or a chair to hold your balance, uh, that works, it's totally fine. So with kickbacks, I'm gonna shift my weight to my right foot and then lift my left foot off the mat, keeping my leg relatively straight. And with kickbacks, I'm going to bring that left leg and uh, keeping my leg straight, uh, keeping my back straight, lifting that leg, that foot back behind me. So as we're doing this, we're engaging our, uh, the muscles in the back of our leg and then our, our uh, quads as well. So engaging our glutes and our hamstrings and bringing our leg back. And then as we lower our foot to match our right foot, kind of engaging our, our um, quads. So we'll do that on the left side. And then we'll do the same on the right. So shifting my weight to my left foot, bringing my right foot off the mat, letting it hover, and then bringing it back behind me, keeping my chest and my torso upright, just a very gentle movement back, keeping that foot, uh, that leg straight, and then returning it to match my left foot. Those are kickbacks. The next one is speed skaters. So I'm gonna start on the left side of my workout space. This is a lateral jump to the right. So right now on both my feet, as I jump to the right, I'm gonna land on my right foot, leaving my left foot hovering uh, behind me. My knee is bent at about 90 degrees. So the sole of my foot is facing the wall behind me. Uh, the sole of my left foot is facing the wall behind me. I'm balancing on my right foot, and then I'm gonna jump back to the left, landing on my left foot, letting my right foot hover with my knee bent at about 90 degrees and my right sole facing the wall behind me. So skater jumps, you can jump with these. If that's too much impact for you, you can sidestep, taking a step, 
leaving your, as you step right, leaving your left foot hovering behind your right foot. Okay, again, this is choose a pace that works for you. Uh, what do your hands do, you ask? Well, as you jump right, you want to point right. Take that momentum of your hands and point in the direction your eye popping. As I'm skating to the left, my hands are going to point to the left. And that momentum will help me jump from side to side. You'll feel this on your, uh, by your hips and your upper legs, as well as your uh, calf muscles help you hold your balance as you're moving from side to side. So that's a speed skater. And the last one, chair, squat, jumps. I'm gonna pull a chair out here. And we'll use a chair for this one. So we'll start in a sitting position on the chair. So I'm just gonna take, sit, take a seat here. Sitting in a nice comfortable position. My body is, my upper body is upright, head up, shoulders back. And I'm just gonna jump up. So from sitting position, take my arms back here behind my hips, swing them forward and point them up towards the sky as I'm jumping up. And then we are gonna squat very slowly back into our seating position on our chair. As we do, we'll bring our arms down to the side. So we're gonna jump up out of our chair and then squat slowly to a sitting position. Jump up, squat down to sit. If you would like an extra challenge, you can push that chair out of the way and start in a squatting position. Jump up, hands up as you do. As you land, you're gonna slowly squat down, sticking your butt out behind you, squatting down and then jumping up again. So squatting to a sitting position, hands go up as you jump up and then go down as you squat down. Okay, your choice. Uh, feel free to use a chair, or if you'd like the extra challenge of not using a chair and staying in that squatting position, it's up to you. So again, our standing leg circuit consists of uh, kickbacks, speed skaters, and chair squat jumps. We'll do them each for 30 seconds, and we'll do three rounds, starting in three seconds with kickbacks. And go. So standing in a comfortable uh, stance, my feet are less than shoulders width apart. I'll put my weight on my right foot, kick my left foot back, return my left foot to the ground, and then kick my right foot back. Engaging our glutes and our hands in the back, the muscles in the back of our upper leg, and stressed. Moving to speed skaters next. I'm gonna step to the left side of my workout space. And three, two, one, speed skate. Here we go. So I'm jumping laterally to the right, landing on my right foot, keeping my left foot dangling behind me. And then jumping laterally to the left, landing on my left foot, keeping my right foot uh, hovering above the ground with the sole of my hovering foot facing the wall behind me. With your hands, swing them in the direction you're jumping to use that uh, momentum to carry you from side to side. Resting. Next, the chair squat jumps. Coming up. Here we go. And go, starting with the seating position, hands back behind you, hands up to create that motivation to jump up. And then squatting down, bringing your hands down next to the chair, jumping up, squatting down. Two side view here, jumping up, squatting down, jumping up, squatting down. And rest, moving back to our kickbacks. In three, two, one, go. Nice, calm, comfortable standing position. Kicking back our right foot, returning the right foot to the ground. Kicking back our left foot, returning it to the ground. Want to try to keep your upper body as still and upright as possible. And just a simple, 
slow motion kick back behind you. Rest and resting. Moving into speed skaters. Woo! Second round. Here we go. And three, two, one. Speed skating. Creating that momentum with your hands pointing the direction that you're skating, that you're jumping side to side. Here we go. Lateral jump. When you're jumping left, landing on your left foot. Jumping right, landing on your right foot. Skating away. Here we go. Choose a pace that works for you. And rest. Next, chair, squat, jumps. Bring him back the chair. And go. Hands back behind you. Hands up to the sky. Jump up. Squat back down. Remember to breathe. We're working those muscles. They need the oxygen. Side of you. And resting. Moving into the last round of kickbacks. Get my heart rate up. I can feel it. And go. Slow, slight movement. Balancing on one foot, kicking the other foot back behind you. Uh, feel free. These are all challenging for balance. If you need to put your hand on a table or a chair, feel free to do so. Want to keep your leg as straight as you can. Really working those upper leg muscles. Resting. All right, speed skaters, here we come. Last round of speed skating. Whew. And go to the right, to the left. Skating through the ice rink. Going to pass that person in front of you. You can pick up the pace. Skate a little faster, or you can hold that glide, holding on one side for a little bit longer, and then the other side holding for a little bit longer. Working that balance. Here we go. Three, two, one. Rest. rest. Moving into the last round of chair squat jumps. Going. Sitting down, arms up, jumping up. As you squat down, you bring your arms down with you. Fast jump up, burst of energy, slow squat down. Burst up, slow squat down. Take it off. Three, two, one. And complete. Nice job. We have made our way through standing core circuit and standing leg circuit. I'm going to grab a drink of water. Always good to stay hydrated. And we'll move next into our arm circuit. All right. All the jumping. My mat's shifting a little bit. i rearrange my space here. So don't trip over my mat. Okay, arm circuit, get ready. So the three exercises we're going to do are kickboxing jabs, followed by prone or standing snow angels, followed by inchworms. So for kickboxing jabs, I'm going to stand with a wider stance, a little wider than shoulders width apart. I'm going to bring my uh, hands up into a fist and put them down by my, or up by my armpits. And twist my body. And as I bring my left hand forward across my body, I'm going to twist my core slightly. My right hand is still hanging out by my right armpit. And then I'll retract my left arm, bringing it back to my left armpit. As I do, I twist my torso slightly. And then I'm gonna bring my right fist and thrust it forward across my body, straightening my arm so that my wrist is even with my shoulder. 
and then I'm going to retract it back to my armpit. So we'll punch across our body, left arm, then right arm. As we bring our arm back, uh, we retract our fist towards our armpit, and we'll just go punching back and forth. As we do this, try to keep your shoulders back in a nice, uh, solid, um, upright position with your torso. Head up, be proud. And that is our kickboxing jabs. The next one is prone snow angels or standing snow angels. So if it's too much to go from standing position to lying position and then back up for inchworms, uh, you can do this one standing. I'll show you standing first and then I'll show you the prone one, which means lying flat on your belly. So snow angel standing. I wanna a little bit uh, wider than shoulders of the part stance. And I'm gonna take my hands, put them next to my body with my palms facing forward. And I'll bring my hands simultaneously, arch them out. So I'm in that T position, up, up, up to the top. So my fingertips touch at the very tippy top. And then I'll bring my hands back down like I'm making a snow angel in the snow. So that's a standing snow angel, bringing your arms up and back down again. If you want to do the prone snow angel, I'm going to lay flat on my belly. Prone position is when you're laying on your stomach. So lying flat on the ground, I'm going to extend my hands up above my head so my thumbs are touching each other. And I'm going to lift my arms off the ground and bring, hover them about an inch above the ground into the T shape. So my arms are stretched out by my sides and then down so my hands are next to my hips, but still hovering above the ground. And then I'll go back up again, touch my fingertips, and then back down again so that my hands are next to my hips. Okay, so that is um, a prone snow angel. The next one will be an inchworm. So from this position, we're going to stand back up again. So I'm going to stand at the short end of my mat, facing my mat longwise. I'm going to hinge my waist, bringing my hands down to the mat, and I'm going to walk my hands in front of me until my body is in plank position. When my body is in plank position, my wrists are underneath my shoulders and my toes are engaged. That's what's holding my body up. I've got a flat back, and then I'm going to walk my feet up towards my hands. When my feet get to my hands, I'm going to straighten my knees and hinge the waist, stand up tall, reach for this guy, do a 180, bend down, putting my hands on the mat, hinging him at waist, walk my hands back out again into that plank position, and then bring my feet, walk my feet back up to my hands, stand up and reach for this guy. Turn around and keep doing that. So that's inchworm. All right, so again, we have kickboxing jabs, prone or standing snow angel and inchworm. Let me set my timer and get a quick drink of water here. And we will start this circuit in three, two, one, kickboxing jabs. All right, we're doing our jabs, standing with a little bit wider stance and taking our fists from our armpits punching across our body one arm at a time, left arm, then right arm. As you bring your arm back, retract it back into your armpit. Nice job. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're resting, moving into our snow angels, whether they're standing or prone. I'm gonna do the first set uh, prone. And go. So we're laying on our stomach, hands up above our head. Let them hover above the ground. Bring them down to your hips and then back up again. This is not only working your arm and shoulder muscles, but also your core and a little bit lower back. So make sure you're engaging your core to support your body as you're holding the weight of your arms hovering above the ground, arching from your hips up towards above your head. And resting, moving next into our inchworm. 
three, two, one, going. I'm gonna hinge at my waist, bring my hands down to the mat, walk my hands out in front of me into a plank position, and then walking my feet up to my hands, pinning my waist, standing up, reaching for the sky, turning around, and then walking my hands across the mat again, feet walking them up towards my hands, standing up tall, reaching towards the sky, turning around, and three, two, one, resting. Moving into our kickboxing jabs next. Take a breath, shake those arms out, and go. Let's see those jabs. If you want the extra challenge, you could hold weights in your hand, or soup cans in your hand, or water bottles in your hand, and jab away. Another challenge too, if you want to do a double jab, one, two punches out, one, two punches out. With holding your arm out, extend it a little bit. You're working those muscles even more. Nice job. Taking a rest in three, two, one, rest. Okay, now it's either the prone or the standing snow angel. In three, two, one, going. So I'm doing this one standing, bringing my arms from next to my hips, up and around, touching my fingertips up above my head, and then back down again. Do these nice and slow. So you're using the weight of your hands to build your muscles. You could also do this one if you're doing it standing with weights in your hands. Once again, any types of weights you can find at home, uh, ideally even weights in each hand. And resting, moving into inchworm next. In three, two, one, going. Hinging at the waist, down, touching the mat, walking those hands out, plank position, walking those feet up to your hands, and reaching your hands up towards the sky. Down, walking across the mat. If you want the extra challenge, you can hold that plank position for a little while, walking your feet back up towards your hands, reaching up towards the sky. Get one more in, you got this. And resting, moving in to our kickboxing jabs again. Here we go. And go, jabbing away. Grab some weights, up your game. Hands work just, the, just as fine too. You can use the weight of your arms to strengthen your own muscles. As your muscles get stronger, stronger you can lift in more weights. Feel free to add extra weights if you choose. So we're jabbing one arm at a time across our body, extending an arm out, bringing it back in. And rest. Next is our prone or standing snow angel. In three, two, one, going. All right, nice. Uh, keeping your arms straight, letting them hover above the ground if you're doing it prone. Going from your hips up to your above your head, touching your fingertips and back around. If you want an extra challenge, you can lift your legs and let them hover off the ground as well. And resting. All right, inchworm, here we go. I believe this is the last one in the circuit. And go. Inchworm, hands down, walking them out into a plank. Hold that plank for a moment, walking those feet back to your hands. Standing up tall, reaching for the sky. Turn around and do it again. Walking it out. Walking your feet up to your hands. Standing up, reaching up high. Get one more in here, you got this. Best and complete. Awesome job. All right. So let's see. I think we have enough time. I will show you two for two full body circuit exercises. We'll do them both two times and I'll move into our cool down. Let me reset the timer here and grab a quick drink of water. 
All right. Um, two exercises and two. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Grab a drink of water. And all right. So total body extension is one exercise. And the other one is lunge tricep kickbacks. So for total body extensions, we're going to stand with our feet hip width apart. We're going to hinge our hips back and bend your knees into a squatting position as you swing your arms back behind you. And then swing your arms up over your head, raise into your tippy toes, squeeze those glutes, and keep your core tight and engaged. This is a total body extension. So right now we're extended all the way out. We're on our tippy toes. Our hands are up in the sky. And then we're going to bring our heels back down to the, the mat, go back down into a squatting position, bringing our arms down, and then extending back up. Total body extension, OK? The other one is a lunge tricep kickback. So with this one, we're going to stand with our feet together. If you would like to have weights in your hands, feel free to do so. We're going to step forward uh, into a lunge. And bend both your knees that are at 90 degrees. And you want your, your left foot, which is the foot that's forward, above your ankle and your back foot at 90 degrees so your uh, shin is parallel to the mat. So we're in a lunge right now. We're gonna take our hands up like we did by our armpits in the uh, kickboxing, and we're gonna bring our arms, uh, extending our arms down, straightening our elbows, and then bringing our hands back behind us. So the kickback part is our arms are kicking back behind our body. So they're going from our armpits, circling around, kicking back behind our body in that lunge position, okay? So we'll do that on one side. So that's a left lunge for, left leg is forward for this lunge. Kick back as you bring your arms up, step your right foot forward, and then your left foot back into a lunge. And then as you lunge, down, you're bringing your, your hands from your armpits down so your arms are straight and then kicking those arms back behind you. And then we'll continue that process. So total body extension, squat to extending your body up, and then lunge into tricep kickbacks. With these, we'll go through these each two times and starting with total body extensions. And three, two, one, go. So extend it up, hands up to the sky, on your tippy toes. Bring your hands down as you do squat. Bringing, sitting into that invisible chair, heels around the mat, stand up. Extending your body, hands up to the sky, on your tippy toes, and then squatting back down. Total body extensions. Rest. Resting. Moving into our lunge tricep kickbacks. Standing at the short end of my mat. And go. Lunging forward, bringing my left foot forward. Uh, hands up by my armpits. I'm going to lunge down as I do. My hands are going to come down along my sides, kicking my arms back behind me. The tricep kickbacks. Standing up. As my left foot steps back to my right foot, my hands are going to be up by my armpits. Stepping forward with my right foot, lunging down, bringing my hands down, kicking my arms back behind me, then back up again. Cool, resting. All right, moving into our total body extensions. Here we go. Three, two, one, going. So we're squatting down. And then standing up on our tippy toes, hands coming up towards the sky. Balance up there for one moment if, if it works for you, and then back down again. Total body extension. Nice and slow movement. The slower you go, the more you're working your muscles. 
engaging your core and resting. Moving to our lunge, tricep kickbacks. Here we go. And go. Left leg forward, lunge, tricep kickback. Left foot to meet the right foot, right foot forward, lunge, tricep kickback. Engage your core as you're doing this. Help control your body movement. Keep going, we're almost there. And finish. Nice job, everyone. We have completed our full body challenge circuit. Awesome job. Let's move into our cool down now. We grab a drink of water, and we'll do our cool down. All right, we're gonna do a standing cool down. So we started with dynamic movements, exercises to warm up. Now, as we cool down, we can do static exercises and stretch out those muscles that we've worked so hard. So let's start by doing a forearm stretch. I'm gonna take my hands, putting my palms together in front of my chest and my elbows are out to the side and I'm gonna just gently push my fingertips from one side to the left and then back to center and then over to the right. You can time these with your breath if you choose. Inhale it back to center. Exhaling left. Inhale center. Exhale right. As we're doing our cool down, we're cooling our muscles down as well as bringing our heart rate back to our regular heart rate. So do those uh, enough to uh, really get a good forearm stretch. And when that feels good to you, we'll move into our, um, the next exercise by putting our hands uh, behind our back and interlocking your fingers. So right now my hands are together, fingers interlocked and they're just resting just on my butt. And then I'm going to hinge at my waist forward. And as I do that, I'm gonna bring my arms up. So my arms are reaching up towards the sky and I'm hinged forward, getting a nice stretch in my upper arms, my shoulders, bring, it brings my shoulder blades together. Go ahead and hinge and hold that for a couple of breaths. And when that feels good, we'll return to a standing position, unlock your fingers and shake your arms out a little bit. Next, I'm gonna pull onto a chair to do a standing quad stretch. So for this one, holding onto a chair, I'm gonna bring my uh, left foot off the mat, kick my foot behind me and uh, hold uh, my foot with my left hand, my left foot with my left hand, and I'm getting a nice stretch in the uh, muscles in the front of my upper leg, my quad muscles. Definitely work those when we were doing our lunges and our squats. Stretch out our left side, hold here for a few breaths. And when that feels good, go ahead and release your left foot. We'll do the same thing with our right foot by kicking our left foot up behind our back and holding on to our left foot with our, I'm sorry, our right foot with our right hand. Holding onto a chair for balance or table, whatever works for you. Hold here for a few breaths. And when that feels good, go ahead and shake it out. Shake out your legs, shake out your hands. Next, we'll do a forward bend. So uh, standing with my feet shoulders width apart, I'm gonna hinge at my waist and just bend down, letting my hands fall to the floor. Maybe your hands touch the floor, maybe they don't. Either way is a-okay. We're stretching out our lower back, as well as the backs of our legs, our, our hamstrings and our glutes. Just let your hands dangle. If you uh, want your hands not to touch the mat, you can hold on to each of your elbows with your hands and just let your, let your upper body weight dangle. You can shift your hands over to your right foot to get a little different stretch. 
back to center and then over by your left foot. And when your forward bend feels good, and your legs are feeling stretched out, stand up straight and we'll do a side bend. So again, we'll return our hands to our hips like we did earlier in this workout and bring our left hand up and around. Left, left fingertips are pointing the right wall and just hold there for a few moments, taking a few breaths. And when that feels good, bring that left hand back to your hip, bringing your right hand off your hip, arching it up and around. So your right fingertips are pointing the left wall, getting a nice side stretch in your right side. Just hold there for a few breaths. And when that feels good, return that hand to your hip. And next we're going to arch our back. So um, by putting your hands, keeping your hands on your hips there, arch your back, look, turn your gaze up towards the sky. You'll feel a nice stretch in your core muscles. This is kind of like standing cobra. So I'm pushing my hips forward and at the same time, bringing my shoulders back, touching my shoulder blades together, turning my gaze up towards the sky. If you'd like a little twist in that, you can turn your gaze over your left shoulder and then over your right shoulder. And when that feels good, that's all we have for you today. Go ahead and shake that body out. Shake out that energy, bring some good energy in and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for joining the Northwest Association for Blind Athletes today for our intermediate full body workout. Enjoy your day.